Good evening. I'm here on Wild Acres Road in North Attleboro. All alone. Pretty desolate, huh? Did you ever wonder what it would be like to be the only person left on planet Earth? Pretty lonely? Pretty quiet? Well, such is the situation in tonight's film. With one interesting twist, you're also surrounded by zombies. <laughs> You know, before anyone ever heard of a zombie apocalypse, American International Pictures released tonight's feature, The Last Man on Earth, in the summer of 1964. The film was shot on location in Rome, Italy, and stars horror movie legend Vincent Price as Dr. Robert Morgan, the sole survivor of a deadly plague who experiments with vaccines during the day and battles the undead at night. Unlike the slew of zombie pictures in recent years, the zombies in this film move slowly, very slowly. And they only come out at night, so they're more like vampire zombies. The film was remade several times. In 1971, Charlton Heston portrayed Dr. Morgan in The Omega Man. And in 2007, Will Smith took the lead in I Am Legend. There is also a current television show that borrows the same title but has nothing in common with our film. This film was shot in the winter and usually very early in the morning. And according to Vincent Price, and I quote, I was never so cold in my life as I was when I made The Last Man on Earth. So much so that he paid his private driver quite handsomely to keep the car running between scenes so we could have a smoke and stay warm. So let's sit back and imagine for a moment that you are the sole survivor in a zombie apocalypse. And let's try and put ourselves in the shoes of Dr. Morgan and see if we can save the world from complete extinction. From 1964, the cult classic, The Last Man on Earth. Oh, and as you watch this, give some thought to the fact that having the world in the palm of your hand is not all it's cracked up to be. I'll be back at intermission with a trivia question and your chance to win a prize. Until then, this is Fright Night. Another day to live through. Better get started. December 1965. Is that all it has been since I inherited the world? Only three years. It seems
seems like a hundred million. Every day there are more of them. They live off the weak ones and leave them for the pit. KOKW calling. Come in. KOKW calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in. Pleasurable. Now it bores me. Just fuel for survival. I'll settle for coffee and orange juice this morning. But first, there's my life transitor. I'd better replace that garlic. I'll need 
more, lots more. Better stop off and get them. afford the luxury of anger. Anger can make me vulnerable. It can destroy my reason, and reason's the only advantage I have over them. I've got to find where they hide during the day. Uncover every one of them. Now, where did I finish off yesterday? Madison Street to 31st Avenue. 11 kills. Over three years. And there's more than half the city I haven't searched. apart so their body seal can't function. And how many more of these will I have to make before they're all destroyed? They want my blood, if their lives are mine. And I still get squeamish. Wait, that garlic. I'd better put it back where it belongs. I can't live a heartbeat away from hell and forget it. stop I'll have to make. I can get rid of them later. Right now I'm out of gas.
still fresh. But I'll take only what I need. They've got to last. I've got my life to worry about. Those mirrors have to be replaced before dark. search. time left. It'll be dark in an hour. before the sun will rise and drive them back to darkness.
day. Another day to start all over again. Birds. God, how I miss you. The sun's already set. They'll be everywhere. Thank you. 
Hey, Verge. Verge. Yes? Oh, no. My makeup. My hair. <laughs> hey, where is everybody? All I can see Hi, is... Hi, Ben. Oh. I can hear children, but I can't see any children. Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben! Hey, look at how I'm crazy. Ben, Uncle Kathy. Ben! Uncle ben. <laughs> Open them and see. Open them and Ooh. see. Come, come. Take a look at this. It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? Do I have to remind you that theory is a beginning of solution?
Is Europe's disease carried on the wind? Is it, Ben? Could be. And if it is? It isn't, Verge. Is that what you really think, or just what you'd like to think? I, I cannot accept half-baked theories that sell newspapers. I'm, I'm a scientist, not an alarmist. You're whistling past the graveyard. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Uncle Ben, you promised your cartridge. All right, Kathy. Who can resist that face? <laughs> All right. Card tricks. Card tricks. Robert, is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Anything is possible, Verge. The best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine tooth comb. The germ is visible under a microscope, but it's not like any bacilli I ever known. In what way? It can't be destroyed by any process we've been able to uncover. But with the whole world trying, there must be a solution. Hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy. When are you going to cut the cake? <laughs> right now, our problem is to cut that cake. <laughs> hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy! Coming! Coming! wind wake you up? It always does. How do you feel? I'm all right. Oh, don't get up, honey. I'm not sick, Bob. I'll make you You don't breakfast. have to. I'll be all right. Go on and read your paper. All right. Oh, sweetheart, look, if you don't feel well, please go back to bed. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I wish somebody would find a vaccine. It's all we're working on at the lab, Birch. Maybe you better not send her to school today. All right. You... You think you should go to work? I have to. Oh, Bob. Bob. I'm so... Frightened. Everything's going to be all right, sweetheart.
Well? The bacilli are multiplying. That kicks the bone marrow theory in the head. This specimen shows a higher white count than when I put it on the slide. Those cells are still living, Dr. Mercer, off one another. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. So we keep trying. Where's Cortman? Well, he should be here by now. You two stay on this virus theory until I decide it's exhausted. Right. Yes, sir? Morgan will fill you in. All right, sir. And what did the great man of science have to say today? More of the usual? Oh, he's trying, Ben, just like the rest of us. And nothing works. The streets are swarming with truckloads of bodies that they're throwing into that god-awful pit. And the dedicated Dr. Mercer goes on with his plodding, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportions. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Well, let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You'd prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and... and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know it's dusk. Now, is this bacilli or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. Point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. And until further notice, this station will continue its around-the-clock coverage of this national disaster. And now, we switch you to the state capitol, where His Excellency, the Governor, is speaking from the Executive Mansion. Further, I have, in conjunction with the federal government, declared this state to be a disaster area. The public health is dependent on bodies of the deceased being burned. You must notify the health department immediately. If you have a plague victim in your home, under no circumstances should you gather public. If you're the dire emergency that exists, I intend to... Anything new? Huh? No, nothing new. I'm going to call the doctor. I said no. Verge, there's nothing they can do. But we can't just let her lie there. Well, this way she has a chance. If you call a doctor, he'll report it. Do you want that? Mommy, help me. Mommy. Mommy, please help me. Mommy, help me. How can you be so sure she... Blindness is one of the symptoms. You're not to call a doctor under any circumstances. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? I've got to pick Ben Cortman up on the way to the... the lab. 
No one is to come into this house. <laughs> now remember that. Who's there? It's me, Ben. We're late. Ben, what's the matter with you? Nothing, and I'm going to keep it that way. Ben, look, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You think I'm out of my mind. You laughed at me in my theory. You might be one of them. Ben, look, you're ill. You ought to see a doctor. No, doctors. You take care of your life, I'll take care of mine. Now get away from here. You understand? Get away from here! If you're looking for anybody but me, forget it. Are they all gone? That's right. Is there any hope from the latest reports? No, not yet. But believe me, Morgan, we'll find an answer. When, doctor? We need it right now. I need it. You're the only one who wasn't afraid to come here today. What's going to happen, Dr. Mercer? Is everybody in the world going to die before someone finds the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that.
I called the doctor. I had to. I told you not to call anyone. Mom, she was blind. She couldn't see. She kept reaching out her hands, groping for me. And then, all of a sudden, she was gone. And they came and I, I tried to stop them. They took her. I saw a truck out there. Was that it? Was it? I'm sorry, lady. There's nothing I can do. Let that truck through. Get out of the way. Get back, folks. Nobody's allowed out there. Please, all of you, get behind those lines. Look sharp there. Move. Move along. Make way for that truck. Make way. Hey, you, mister. Come back. Come back. Did this truck just come in from Market Street? I said, did this truck just come in from Market Street? Mister, I don't know. Hey, you don't belong in here. Get out. I said get out. I want my daughter. Mister, a lot of daughters are in there, including my own. I won't let them put you there, Virg. I promise. I won't let them put you there.
Who is it? Who's there? You're watching Fright Night, and my name is John O'Neill. And right now it's time for our Fright Night trivia question. I hope you've been paying close attention to Dr. Morgan and his humble abode. If so, you should be able to answer this if you've noticed his calendar. In what year does our film take place? The first two viewers to submit correct answers to me via email at the email listed on the screen will win a very cool gift from our Fright Night prize vault. And here's a little Last Man on Earth factoid. As a way of inducing realism into the film, Vincent Price insisted on lifting real people instead of dummies when transporting them to his car. This is why in certain scenes, he seems to be taking extra care with the bodies. Now a brief intermission, and then the second half of The Last Man on Earth. This is Fright Night. Come back. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. What do North Attleboro residents think of international, national, state, and town issues? Join Peter Gay for Up for Discussion, featuring members of local media, town officials, and people like you. Based on HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher and Hannity on the Fox News Network, Up for Discussion tackles the topics making headlines. Up for Discussion every month on North TV's community and government channels, Comcast channels 15 and 98, and Verizon channels 23 and 24. Did you know you could have your very own TV show? North TV holds TV production workshops that will allow you to come in and learn what goes on behind the camera, in front of the camera, and everything else you'll need to produce a show. Learn from North TV Access Coordinator Brett Poirier as he takes you through the workshop and helps you every step of the way to ensure your show goes from development to production and into your home. North TV Production Workshops with Access Coordinator Brett Poirier. Produce your own TV show.
If Cortman thinks he can get to me by destroying my car, his wits are getting dull. <laughs> this convertible would be nice. Probably handles well. But I can't think of comfort. There was a time when I shopped for a car. Now I'm looking for a hearse. This station wagon will have to do. Search every street, every house, every alley, every inch of this town. I've got to find it. Come back! Hey, boy, where are you? Where are you, pal? Come here. These are made of iron. That wood, that mine. Someone else is alive in this world. But where are they? Where are they hiding? How many are there? Where did they come from? Why haven't I seen them? This is Robert Morgan. If somebody can hear me, answer me. For God's sake, answer me. This is KOKW calling. KOKW calling. Answer me. Finally decided to come back. It's all right, boy. Good boy. Oh, no. Don't worry, boy. You're going to be all right. Yes, you are. Now we 
I've got you all cleaned up. Hmm? <laughs> You're going to feel better. I'm going to put you down here now, and you can rest. Hmm? Got you all cleaned up. There you go. Rest. You know they're out there, don't you? You poor, driven thing. Everything's gonna be all right. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Everything's gonna be all right. All right. You're going to get better. We're gonna have lots of happy times together. You'll see, everything's going to be fine. I'm not gonna hurt you, can't you understand? Wait! I was one of them. You know that they can't come out until sundown. Do you want to come with me or do you want to face them?
feeling better? Yes. Would you like a cup of coffee? Thank you. You seem very well organized here. Yeah. My name is Ruth Collins. I was married. I lost my husband. You are alone. You were married. Yes. Children. My daughter. What are you doing? Please stop, please. Stop it, please. You're making me sick. Why do you turn please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <laughs> systems are allergic to garlic. You think I'm one of them? You will be. You've made up your mind just because I... You can't change the facts by talking. Facts? What facts? That I got sick? I've had a sensitive stomach all my life. I saw my husband killed, torn to pieces right in front of our house. I've been wandering ever since, hiding at night. Not eating more than scraps. Sick with mourning. Sick with fear. Unable to sleep. Then you shout at me. You chase me across a field. Hit me. Drag me to this house. And to top it all, when I get sick because you shove a piece of reeking garlic in my face, you tell me I'm infected. Where are Let you going? Go. You can't go out there. It's almost sunset. Let me go, You can't I said. go out there. Now, in a few minutes, care. the streets will be full let up. Let me go. At I least, don't let care. me give you a blood test. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You must be hungry. I'll fix you some dinner. You know, you should eat. I can't. You seem used to them. Oh, as much as anybody could be. I'm not frightened of them anymore, if that's what you mean. Oh, I protect myself against them, but only because they're so many. Individually, they're weak, mentally incompetent, like animals after a long famine. If they weren't, they surely would have found a way of breaking in here a long time ago. Come out, Morgan! Hear that? That's Ben Cortman. He was my friend. Your friend? He was like a kid brother. If I could find him and destroy him... But you said he was your friend. When I find him, I'll drive a stake through him, just like all the others. But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. 
My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. You don't think that I'm immune, do you? It's a simple matter to find out whether you are or not. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? You don't have to answer. I know as well as you do. It's incurable. There might be a way. If not of killing the germ, at least of containing it, keeping it from spreading. If I had the equipment, the time. But you don't. Injection, I'll be one again. What do you mean? You found a solution? That's right. Exactly as you said it could be. I take that for it. What is it? Defibrinated blood plus vaccine. The blood feeds the germ. The vaccine keeps it isolated and prevents it from multiplying. We've had it for some time now. We? We? There are quite a number of us. And I thought you were alone. I was going to cure you. Does that amuse you? No. Now, I want the truth. I want all of it. Why are you here? To find out if you know any more than we do. You know, far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. We're going to reorganize society. Do away with all those wretched creatures who are neither alive nor dead. Start everything all over again. And you want me to join? You can't join us. You're a monster to them. Why do you think I ran when I saw you? even though I was assigned to spy on you, because I was so terrified of what I'd heard about you. You're a legend in the city, moving by day instead of night, leaving as evidence of your existence bloodless corpses. Many of the people you destroyed were still alive. Many of them were loved ones of the people in my group. I didn't know. Is there any way you can get out of here? What do you mean? They're coming after you tonight. That's why I was sent here, to prevent you from resisting them. I'm supposed to keep you here until they come. To kill me? Yes. Your new society sounds charming. The beginning of any society is never charming or gentle. And you pretended to be shocked at my violence. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you go on and use it? Get it over with. Use it. Get it over with. <laughs> now you know. What are you going to do? <laughs>
you're doing. It's already done. What? Look. Look. You see, it worked, Ruth. The antibodies in my blood worked. My blood has saved you, Ruth. Do you know what this means? You and I can save all the others. We won't be alone. We'll never be alone again. You are sure? Wait. Don't be afraid. I have to get out of here. And tell them you're not a threat to us. You can't go out there. You, you wouldn't all of get us. ten feet. When they come here, there won't be time for questions and Ruth. answers. They'll come to kill. For God's sake, Robert, let me go. Oh, Robert, please. Ruth, look. Tomorrow. Please. Oh, Robert. Tomorrow, Ruth. Tomorrow will no. be all right. Oh, Robert, no. Yes, Ruth. But if this doesn't last... But it will. I've already checked it under the microscope. Wait, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. I'll check it again. Take a look at this. This will prove it to you. Ruth, there's no change. I've double checked. Get him! Get him! 
They were afraid of me. They were afraid of me. They didn't know.
Don't cry. There's nothing to cry about. We're all safe now. All safe. They don't make them like that anymore. I hope you enjoyed Fright Night. If you did, please tell your friends, and if you didn't, well then let's just keep it our little secret. Till we meet again, good night, sleep tight, and you should probably leave that nightlight on. <laughs> <laughs>